Hello and welcome to another ASP.NET Core coding tutorial from Around the Code. Now today we're going to have a look at ASP.NET Core's test server and how we can go about actually using it in a next unit test project. Now come to the end of this video, you'll be able to successfully test your ASP.NET Core web API endpoints in a next unit test project. Now this starts a brand new series where basically we're going to have a look at ASP.NET Core's test server and how we can get the best out of it. Now, test server is basically an in-memory web server and we can basically use it so it behaves in a similar way to a normal web server. Now, for more ASP.NET Core coding tutorials, visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash roundthecode and follow us on Twitter, it's at roundthecode. Now, let's go and have a look and set up test server in our XUnit test project. So now we're going to actually go ahead and create our XUnit test project. What we've got in front of us is basically an ASP.NET Core web API, and we're basically going to use test server to run and basically test the endpoints. So let's go ahead and create our XUnit test project. So we right click on the solution and we go to add new project. So we do a search for XUnit. Click on that, click next, call it the name around the code, the CRUD API tests, and we will create that. Okay, that's created that for us. What we need to do now is we basically need to install a NuGet package uh, for basically running test server. It's called test host. So what we need to do is we go into tools, NuGet package manager, package manager console, if we bring this up a little bit and what we do is we call the command install package microsoft.aspnetcore.testhost that's that done right what we need to do now is we're basically because we're going to be testing the crud api we need to bring in all the projects or assemblies into our test project so quite simply, we just go add and we go for project reference and we're just going to basically tick all of these. So what we're going to do is, as I say, we're going to build a um, test server. What we need to do first, though, is we need to build up a startup class for it because test server is going to run in memory and it's going to work very similar to a normal web server. So we right click on the test project and we create a new class called startup. So this is going to be very similar to the startup that we're using in our CRUD API. There are going to be a few little differences, which is why we're creating a separate one for our tests. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up the startup in our web API and basically just copy it over and we're going to take out the stuff that we don't actually need. So let's make sure we've got all the references. So let's get the assembly for that. Okay, so we've currently got, so if we just start this again, so what we need to do first is we basically, because the controllers are in a separate assembly, they're in the CRUD API web assembly, we need to bring them in, but we also have to specify the assembly. So what we do is we call the services add controllers like you'd normally do if you're using MVC but then you would select this add application part and you'd load in the assembly so the assembly that they're currently in is round the code dot crud api dot web and then we just need to add controllers as assemblies as services even like so. So we've done that. We also need to bring in our database, our entity framework DB context. So we go ahead and do that, add DB context. And the name of it is CRUD API DB context. Now lastly for this section, we've got a couple of services that are part of dependency injection. There are a couple of scoped dependencies. So we need to add them in as well. 
the actual controllers actually rely on these services. So we got one called leak service and we got another one called team service, which we're going to add as well. So the configure services is done. So we now need to just sort out the configure so we can remove that. We only need the I application builder interface. What we need to do is we just need to make sure if we get rid of this, we just need to bring in the app use routine. We need that for the controllers to actually work. And we also need to bring in the use endpoints and we just need to map the controllers. Okay, so we've got our startup file all sorted out, our startup class. Next thing we want to do is we basically want to actually create the test server. So what we're going to do is we've already had a test plan already automatically created for us when we set up the project. So we're going to go ahead and set it up in here. What we're going to do is we're going to set it up in the constructor. So we're going to create a constructor here. And we're also going to reference it as part of the class. So this is going to be our instance of test server. Okay, so to actually build, to actually create an instance of test server, what we need to do is we need to create a new instance of web builder first, or web host builder, shall I say. And within that, we basically need to specify to the web host builder that we're using the startup class that we just created. So quite simply, we can go ahead and do that. We use startup and pass in the startup class. So this is the startup class from our actual test project, not the one in our actual API. Then quite simply, all we do is we call our reference to test server, which of course hasn't been set yet. And we create a new instance of test server and we pass in the web builder. And lastly, what we want to do is basically when the test is run, we want to dispose of the test server so it clears out the memory. So what we can do is we inherit the iDisposable and we bring in the interface for it as well. Obviously get rid of the exception there and we're just going to dispose of it there. Okay, so let's just make sure that all works. Let's make sure it's not throwing an error. So the way we can do that is we can just basically run our tests now. So of course at this stage we're not actually testing anything. We're just making sure that it's actually running and as you can see it's running for us. So that's all good. So what we need to do now is basically we need to talk about how we're going to implement the database. Now there's two options here. The first option is to use a real SQL Server database. Obviously some of the benefits with that is that you can basically test things like indexes, triggers and that sort of stuff, stuff related to the database. But there are quite a lot of drawbacks with that. Basically you're going to have to use realistically a test server database, a test database even. If you use the live database you sort of run the risk of actually overwriting stuff which is not a good idea. The other alternative to that is to use Entity Frameworks in-memory database. Now, that has some advantages in the fact that you're not touching the SQL Server database at all. Some drawbacks, though, is that it won't test any functionality in SQL because it basically only tests up to the Entity Framework part. There's no relationship between Entity Framework and the database. But for this example, we're going to use Entity Frameworks in-memory database. So to do that, what we're going to do is, first of all, we need to install a NuGet package into our test. So we need to select around the code CRUD API tests. Install package microsoft.entityframeworkcore.inmemory. Okay, so that's installed for us. 
the way we can configure this now is basically we go in back into our configure services. So if we move that across and we've got our services add DB context there, pass in the options, and then we can specify options.use in memory database. Now something to note with this is basically if you've got multiple instances of a test running at the same time, you're probably going to have multiple instances of the DB context as well. So basically, you need to give it a separate name each time, a separate database name. Otherwise, it might try and cause some conflicts if there's already another database actually running. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure it's got a unique database name every time a new instance is created and we're just going to call the guild new guild so in order to make sure that this actually works because we're basically passing in options when we're declaring the db context if we go into our db context we just need to make sure that this constructor here is basically in place so basically it's passing in a parameter of db context options with our db context and that's just basically passing all the options into our db context so now now that we've done that we've got our in-memory database we're actually just going to run some tests and make sure that it's actually going to work so at this point we're just going to do some get requests and basically we're going to expect a 404 not found because there's not going to be any actual data in the database because we haven't actually created any data but we're going to go ahead and just basically test that the endpoints are actually working so as we're using x unit we need to declare that it's a fact we need to make it asynchronous so we use the async and the task keyword well we return a type of task with the async keyword and we're going to call it test read methods so in order to call an actual endpoint in test server all we do is we call our instance of test server create a request and this is basically the endpoint so our endpoint is api forward slash league forward slash one so it's basically reading the api endpoint from league with an id of one which of course as i say doesn't exist at the moment and then we just call the send async as a get method so at this stage as i say we're expecting a not found so what we can do is we call the assert class equals http status not found And we can find that in the response.status code. And we're just going to do the same as well for ID of two. So if we move that across a bit, so you can see, change that to two. Like so. Okay, so that should be all sorted out now. So we should go be able to go ahead and actually run our test. So let's go ahead and do that and just see if it's actually working for us. So there you go. You can see it's basically working. It's returning a 404 not found. It's, it's particularly what we expect in any way. So it seems to be working as it should be. So that will allow you to start testing your endpoints in XUnit using test server. Now coming up in part two, we're going to have a look at some useful tips with test server. We're going to look at how you can actually do post requests. We're also going to see how you add an authorization header. That's particularly useful if your endpoints need authentication. That's all coming up in part two, so you should check it out.